Today, a new competitor to AMD and Intel was just announced. Next Gen confirmed, Ryzen 9000 benchmarks are insane and RX 8000 gets bad news. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, like they told us a few days ago, Qualcomm has officially announced their new Snapdragon X chips. Remember that these processors are going in Windows-based notebooks, but they're built on ARM rather than x86, so it's a very interesting new move that could seriously shake up the industry. Either way, let's get to the specs. Starting things off, the chips are divided into three higher-end Snapdragon X Elite chips and their lower-end Snapdragon X+. Plus. All of the processors come with 42 megabytes of total cache, LPDDR5X support, and 45 tops performance. The lower end part is the X1P64100 and it's a 10 core CPU with a max multi-thread frequency of 3.4 GHz and no support for dual core boost. Next is the first X Elite part with the X1E78100 and it's a 12 core CPU with a 3.4 GHz multi-threaded frequency and no dual core boost. Next we have the X1E80100 which is also a 12 core CPU with a 4 GHz dual core boost and a 3.4 GHz multi-threaded boost. Finally is the X1E84100 which is also a 12 core CPU with a dual core boost of 4.2 GHz and a max multi-threaded boost of 3.8. Basically these are looking like some very impressive chips especially given the performance numbers we've seen from Qualcomm are correct and I say that because according to a new article from Semi-Accurate their sources are claiming that Qualcomm is lying about their benchmarks. Now they aren't claiming how Qualcomm exactly is cheating, but that OEMs aren't able to replicate the company's claimed benchmarks. And that one supposed source from Qualcomm flat says they cheated. Of course, I'll follow this story and keep you updated, but as always, I suggest waiting for third party reviews before buying any new products. Next up for today, we've seen AMD's next-gen Ryzen support mentioned in newly released BIOS updates, we've even seen Ryzen 9000 mentioned in coding, but we now have the absolute confirmation from Gigabyte. See, in the Ryzen 9000 mentioned before, it may have been just for a future chip that they were working on, not necessarily next-gen, though it certainly looked that way. But now, in a new official blog post from Gigabyte, the company states that the Agisa 1.1.7.0 is set to add support for the coming AMD Ryzen 9000 series processors boot up. So yeah, if there was any doubt that AMD's next-gen CPUs were going to be Ryzen 9000, we now know for sure. And given this is for AM5 boards, we are in fact talking desktop chips. Of course, that's not a big surprise given AMD already used Ryzen 8000 for Zen 4 CPUs, but those were mobile chips and APUs. So there was still a chance, but not anymore. And next up, we just got some of our first benchmarks for AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000. And let's just say, this is big. The story originally comes from a couple benchmarks that were found from Geekbench 5. And thanks to the OPN code, we know that these are Strix Point APUs. So they're mobile Ryzen 9000, yes, but don't forget that they still include the same Zen 5 cores that'll be in their next-gen desktop parts. Either way, let's get right to them. Starting things off, you can see that both of these benchmarks come with 12 cores. The higher score mentions two CPUs, but I think that's just a mistake. Either way, both of these would be a big step up from current gen's eight cores. And at first glance, the scores may look underwhelming. But here's the thing. The lower score is from the CPU clocked at a measly 1.4 GHz. It says 2 GHz, but it only ever gets to 1.4. And then the 11,978 score was obtained at that 2 GHz. Don't forget that these are engineering samples, so they likely don't get anywhere near their final clocks, meaning these scores are actually amazing. In fact, if we take the score at 2 GHz, it's nearly at the highest in current gen mobile parts. And once again, that's at 2 GHz. So at this level, they might as well be desktop parts. Because if we took this score and look at the current 7900X, it runs at 5.6 GHz. So assuming the next gen part doesn't get any higher clocks, it would mean we need 180% clock increase to match that 5.4 GHz. And with a 180% higher score, we would be at well over 30,000. 
which is even faster than the 16-core desktop Ryzen 7950X. And if we do the same thing with the lower 1.4 GHz part, it would still be over 30,000. Of course, keep in mind that it likely won't scale that perfectly, and according to rumors, four of the 12 cores here are supposed to be their little Zen 5C cores, but still. The desktop parts should be all big Zen 5 cores, and anywhere near the performance here would be a huge uplift. Unfortunately, it's not all good news for AMD as we just got new specs for their upcoming RX 8000 GPUs, and it's disappointing to say the least. The story comes from a new tweet from the well-known leaker Kepler, who was one of the original leakers to claim that AMD wouldn't be releasing high-end RX 8000 GPUs. And in the new tweet, he claims that RDNA 4, which is the architecture set to power RX 8000, will come with 18 gigabit per second memory. And someone asked if this was all of RDNA 4, to which he replied, Yep. For reference, NVIDIA's RTX 50 cards are rumored to come with up to 28 gigabit per second memory. Of course, AMD has their Infinity Cache, which helps to bridge the gap in speed as they've never had the fastest memory, but still. AMD's current gen 7900 XTX already has faster memory, so it's not looking good. If anything, this could point to AMD not even releasing something as fast as their current gen. One hope is that their Infinity Cache is significantly faster so they don't won't even need faster memory, but it's tough to say. All in all, I think the main hope left is that AMD can release a decent upper mid-range part that's an amazing price. Fingers crossed. So while that does it for today, are you getting a bit disappointed for AMD's next-gen GPUs, or are you just really excited about their next-gen CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day!